Uh, we are black first. Uh, we believe in taking care of our community, solving our own problems, putting our children ahead of the curve. Uh, we believe in the, within the next 50 years, our children, B1 children, will lead the world in economic intelligence, wealth building, and all things related. Uh, if you agree with this philosophy, if you understand that we must be one in order to be successful, put a hashtag B in the number one in the chat. I see Terry Cobb already put his hashtag B1, and I know the rest of you are coming in. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, uh, many of you have heard about <clears throat> the men that I consider to be kind of my Mount Rushmore of, of greatness. And uh and I'll mention their names, and I'll tell you why I'm super excited about this conversation today. Uh, the names on the list are uh, the one and only Dr. Claude Anderson, uh, the great Kenny Gamble out of Philadelphia, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and this man right here, Dr. George C. Frazier. Uh, Dr. Frazier is the author of the book, Success Runs in Our Race. Uh, he's the founder of the Power Networking Conference. And so I would like to give a great B1 welcome to uh, my good brother, Dr. Frazier. How are you doing today, sir? I am doing wonderful. I read a tweet. No, was it a tweet? No, it was uh, a post that you uh, put up yesterday uh, in my Facebook feed. We follow each other on Facebook. And it, it, I just I just landed on the floor when I read it because it was so simple and so powerful. I'm paraphrasing a bit, but but. Um, it essentially, it said that black ignorance is a billion dollar industry. Mm -hmm. And I could not agree with you more. Oh, my God, that was so deep and so profound. And, you know, profundity is taking something complicated and simplifying it. And yeah, there it is. Black, there you go. Black ignorance is a billion dollar industry. So I love that. And um, as you know, at the Power Networking Conference coming up August the 11th through the 14th, that's what the only three things we talk about. That's money, business, and wellness, psychological wellness, uh, and mm -hmm. physical wellness, because they're connected. Those are the only three subjects we have covered for 20 years. This is our 20th anniversary. You've been, to, you, you participated, you'll be participating in this one coming up. You participated last year and a couple of years before. So, um, man, I love you. I love what you're about. Uh, I love what your audience is about because th to follow you, you got to be strong and you got to be, you got to share a common vision with this incredible mind called Dr. Boyce Watkins. So, man, thank you so much for having me on, having me back. I really, really appreciate this. Well, I, I know we're going to open the show with our spectacular video that opens our virtual conference. This is what you'll see every day as the opener. We start at noon, we end at about 6.30, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, August the 11th through the 14th. So this is our opener. This is the first time we have developed a spectacular opening. Now, it's about four and a half minutes long, but it's gonna go like lightning, I promise you. Uh, I'm really excited about it. Uh, our director of branding, uh, and design, uh, Delano Johnson just did one hell of a job. With you. You're going to love this. You're going to love it. And um, uh, I know you haven't seen it yet, right? You, you haven't seen it. You I, haven't seen it. I, I've, I've watched the first 30 seconds, but the, the rest will be a surprise for me. Okay, good, good. Okay. All right. So we'll, awesome. we'll, just, uh, we'll just leave All it right. at that. It will start okay. with that. I think it'll be a great conversation start. Okay, great. Well, uh, everybody, um, as you come in, hit the thumbs up button if you haven't done it and take one second, share this video with anybody that needs to hear from Dr. Frazier. If you know how great this man is, you know that all of our people need to hear from him. Like, If, if we had as many people, Dr. Frazier, if you were, if, if people, if there's many people listen to you as there are, they listen to some of these rappers, <laughs> our community would be number one in the world. Like we literally would be dominating the earth. And so, uh, so I say George Frazier for president. I just want to say that. Uh, and also, uh, give us a yes in the chat if you're ready to watch this awesome video. Uh, I'm about to share my now, screen right I, now. It, oh, Dr. Boyce, Dr. Boyce, by the way, this is the national debut of this video, right? Mm. The national debut of this video. So, All right. So, so you, all, you all are the first. You saw it here first. This is awesome. Well, I'm honored that, you, that you're doing the national de debut here. And uh, I will share my screen and share my audio. So give me one second here. Let me make sure I do this right. Um, and uh, here we go. So let me uh, I'm, let me just go ahead and hit the play button. Here we go. I prepared a 
chart. I don't know what happened to the sound. Dr. Boyce, can you hear me? Oh, Dr. Frazier, did the audio yeah. go out? Yes, the it did. Went out. It oh. went out. I'm so sorry, everybody. Let me let me try it again. Let me try. Give me a yes in the chat if you can hear it. I truly, I'm truly sorry. I muted myself and I might have muted the video too. So I'm not going to mute myself this time. I am so sorry, everybody. Chalk it up to my uh, technological ignorance. My apologies. Let me try that one more time and I'm going to do this right this time. My apologies. All right. So let me back up. Let me back up. I prepared a chart. Represents beautiful, educated, money black people all over America. And what you will notice about these beautiful black people all over America is that everybody is doing their own thing, caught up in a Eurocentric value of rugged individualism, having forgotten that it takes a village to raise a child. There is no power here, brothers and sisters, there is no power here. There is no power for us being Disconnected. See, there's nothing wrong with dispersion. I live in Cleveland, you live in Atlanta. We have folk in the Caribbean, we have folk in Africa. That's dispersion. That's okay, but we do not have to be disconnected. We are a disconnected people. We are powerless in disconnection. Spiders unite, they can tie up a lion. Mm. That must be the 
must be the movement for our people in the 21st century. Mm. Wow, wow. I love that video. Uh, everybody, uh, let, let this brother know how much you appreciate what you just saw on that screen. Um, I, I was inspired by it. Uh, I really love that part about the tiger and the lion, you know, you know yeah. some of these, the spiders and the lion. Yeah, and, right. uh, and, and I was thinking, uh, I said, I wonder if I want to be a spider or a lion. I said, well, I wonder if, if spiders uniting can tie up a lion. What happens when lions unite? You know, because uh, some of y'all here are lions. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'll tell there you go. what, that's, uh, that, that was a beautiful video. So tell us about that. What what was the logic behind that? And by the way, sorry about that technical difficulty issue. My apologies, but uh, I, I loved it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, so give us some uh, thoughts behind uh, the message in, in that video, Dr. Frazier. Um, it is a lifelong message that I've been writing about and speaking about, as you well know. Uh, in my first book, Success Runs in Our Race, I wrote 30 damn years ago. Uh, I proposed that we have to be better at building relationships and connecting and effectively utilizing the human and intellectual capital of black people globally. And once we understood that, once we understood how to do that, uh, that we would be unstoppable. Uh, and you notice that the video focused on the web. It did not focus on the spider. There was no picture of a spider. There was a continual picture of the web that the spider weaves that catches its prey. That's really what we're talking about here. Um, Relationships are important. It's important in business. Business is about relationships. Without relationships, you have no business. Without relationships, you have no business being in business. In fact, the business we're all really in is in the business of building relationships. That's what it's all about. You don't build a business. You build people and people build your business, right? Mm -hmm. So it's about developing relationships. It's about loving ourselves first, understanding who we are. When you see, if I get up in the morning and I look in the mirror and I do not love what I see as a black man, there's no way that I can love you because you become a reflection of me. So it begins with self-love. It begins understanding who we are. It begins understanding not only what your modern history is, but what your ancient history is, that we are the children of the slaves that would not die, that we have the genetic encoding of the great kings and queens of Africa, that we were building pyramids and solving complex engineering problems when other cultures were living in caves, eating each other. So if everything happens for a reason and serves us in some special way, and you will never understand the reason looking forward, and you will only understand it look, looking backwards, maybe we were not brought here. Maybe we were sent here. Do you believe that God would put his weakest people here to do his toughest job? How could an America who could morally, spiritually, and biblically justify the kidnapping, raping, and pillaging of another two people, natives already in America and Africans brought to America, have any moral or spiritual grounding? And perhaps had God not sent African people here, America might have self-destructed by now. We are an awesome and powerful people in our connectivity. Right. But in our individuality, we can be divided and conquer, which is, in fact, what has been heaped on us. And we have gone through the greatest psychological holocaust, not only about what our real history is and who we really are, God's first people, um, but what our potential and our capabilities are. So it is about uniting. I, I tell people all the time, you've heard me say this a thousand times, Dr. Watkins, you're the average of the five people that you hang out with. Introduce me to your five closest friends and that will tell me who you are. So, so the fastest way to change yourself is to hang out with people who are already where you want to be. What am I really saying? Don't spend major time with minor people. People going nowhere want you to go nowhere with them. People doing nothing want you to do nothing with them. If you want to change your life, change your relationships, okay? If you are not where you want to be, it's because you do not have the right people in your life to get there. So it's about, and that's what we teach at the Power Networking Conference. So we teach the power and importance of connectivity, of building strategic alliances, joint ventures, and partnerships as we as we 
aspire to grow our businesses. You can't do it alone. Um, we teach us about wealth. As I said, that's the only talk about three things over four days at the Power Networking Conference, building our businesses and scaling those businesses. So let me say the next thing and still uh, be loved. Um, if you don't have a business, if you don't have a system, uh, you don't have a business, right? I, I don't know what the hell you have, but you have to have a system. And so we teach our people how to build systems, even if you are a sole proprietor. You need a system to replicate, duplicate, and scale your business. But again, this knowledge is embedded and it is someplace within some brother or sister. You, most people just don't know who they are or they will just simply not do the work that is necessary to do. Dr. Boyce, you work very, very, very hard. I work very, very, very hard. The work that we are doing and or anybody who is on purpose is hard. And unless you're passionate about it and unless you love it, a reasonable person is simply going to give up. They're going to quit. So it's about, so you have passion. I watch you probably five times a week. I spend at least five to seven hours watching you. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i watching you. I'm listening to you. I'm taking notes, right? I'm learning from you. And this is critically important. This takes time and this is hard, but what comes out when I listen to you, I'm always inspired because you're so damn passionate about what you, you speak about. You say it with conviction. You say it with deep knowledge. You're well-read. You're well-educated. And you are about giving back to the community. You are a huge node in the webs of networks that we need to build, right? You are a network within yourself. You are a community within yourself, but it is linked to and attached to my community as it is both of us are attached to Dr. Claude Anderson's community and there are other communities, but it's not enough. So that's, and I, I know I went a little bit off on it, but what I'm really talking about is changing. Is changing, having a different mindset, because the only way that we can live is if we grow. And the only way that we can grow is if we change. And the only way that we can change is if we learn. And the only way that we can learn is if, in fact, we are exposed and if, in fact, we are effectively networking. And the only way that we can become exposed and effectively network is if we throw ourselves out into the open, be open to the vision, take in the knowledge, let it inspire you. I don't believe in motivation. I'll be honest with you. Nobody has to motivate my has to get up in the morning. Nobody has to motivate you to get up in the morning. I perhaps can inspire we, inspire you with thoughts and ideas that I may have, as you inspire me all the time with thoughts and ideas and perspective and context, right? And I use those things. I take, I write down your nuggets and I use them wherever it is appropriate. I'm learning from you. You're a huge part of my knowledge network. You are yeah. No, absolutely. You are a great inspiration, not only to me, but many, many others. And so that's what, in essence, that four and a half minute video is saying. Connect us, learn from each other, leverage more effectively our collective resources and intellectual capital. We are an awesome and powerful people. They know it. And that's why they have worked on our head to divide and conquer us, right, to reduce us to no history, um, uh, no impact. Um, no, it, that is not true. It's a total lie. And we can disprove all of that. We are, in fact, slowly but surely disproving that. And we will continue as long as we have leadership like you. People ask me all the time, Dr. Fraser, what happened to black folks? We're moving backwards. I said, if the fish stinks, look to the head. It's leadership. It's leadership. It's leadership. You are a leader. It's leadership. At the end of the day, it is leadership. Yes. Wow. <clears throat> Everybody, uh, in case you just came in, I'm speaking with the one and only George C. Frazier, author of the book, Success Runs in Our Race, uh, founder of the Power Networking Conference. Uh, the conference, and tell me if I get anything wrong, Dr. Frazier, the conference is August 11th through 14th. Uh, the, website, the website's, uh, sorry? It's, yes, it's the 11th okay. through the okay. 14th. It's virtual. Okay. Remember, it's virtual. So there's nobody watching us right now that cannot tune in. 
it's available globally. Last year, this is our second virtual conference. We had to cancel the conference last year because of COVID. We mm -hmm. did a virtual. We had over 10,000 people around the world join us in this virtual and global conference. This is, now, so we now, this is part two. So be on, and I'm gonna make a special offer to folks at the end so that they can, they will get a special deal. I call it my Dr. Boyce Watkins special, right? Because we're gonna go back live next year. We're gonna go back, it'll be the first live power networking conference in three years. The, this is our 20th anniversary. Next year will be our 21st anniversary. And um, that will be off the chazane. People will be chomping at the bit to come back together. So while the virtual is off the chart, um, there is no replacement for a live conference. You know that you've done live. Right. right. This is wonderful. This beats a sharp stick in the eye. There's nothing we can do but to do this to stay safe. But at the end of the day, we are oral, visual, tactile, kinesthetic and auditory people. Right. You, they want to feel it. Black folks want to feel it. They want to feel you. They want to shake your hand. They want to hug Boyce Watkins. Um, and that's what we're going to go back to next year. But in the meantime, we got you this year at the virtual. We had you last year at the virtual. This is the best we can do. And well, well, I love it. I love it. And um, and everybody, I, I, I can tell you all um, that that conference is is just uh, extraordinary. It's um, it's it's an honor to be a part of it. You know, uh, I, I I remember the first time I went in two thousand six, and and uh, what really uh, impressed me, uh, Doctor Frazier, when I was first sort of being introduced to your ideas. Uh, and it's funny because I, I was actually introduced to your ideas around the same time uh, I was introduced to Dr. Claude Anderson's ideas around wow. 05, 05, 06 mm -hmm. when I was teaching at Syracuse. And what I really like, and, and I think this is the secret sauce that so many people are missing, is understanding where where that relationship piece fits in to, uh, to the wealth building process. Uh, and, and it made me think about the last three or 400 years and why they worked so hard to make sure we had incredibly unhealthy relationships with each other. Uh, it's why they made sure that our families did not stick together. And, uh, and, and unfortunately that propaganda still works in some spaces, uh, you know, and, and, and there, there are people that say, well, gosh, why can't I get ahead? I can't figure it out. I think it's because people still don't understand that, that the wealth game is a team sport. You know, you can't play a team sport by yourself. You can't win the NBA finals with one player. Even LeBron can't win the NBA finals by himself. And and, and so uh, so you and I were talking actually about uh, our wives. Now, you know, I haven't been married that long, uh, but I've known my wife for a long time. We've been great friends for a very long time. Um, and you've been you're 47 years in and you were speaking to me about how important your wife has been in your uh, in the creation of the empire that you built. Can you kind of speak to that a little bit? Yeah. Married to the same sister for 47 incredible years. You would not be seeing the man that you see on this screen today if it was not for Nora Jean Fraser. Um, I said to you earlier that the, the two most important decisions that you will make in your life as it relates to your relationships will be your life partner, your wife, or your husband, and your business partner. For me, it was Greg Williams. He was with me for 32 years before he died of cancer. Hmm. The interesting thing, with the right life partner, you also have an incredible business partner because marriage is a serious ass business. When the lovey-dovey stuff wanes, you get down to business. And just like you have a partner in a real business, you have a partner in the business of life. And each of you have roles. You must share a common vision. And you know that most divorces happen because of money. Either the way the money is managed, the disagreement in the way it is managed or the lack of money because for one reason there is no plan for two to work on that now the man is fundamentally responsible i think for money but there 
We're in a time where the woman can, and oftentimes, most of the time, is, and sometimes must contribute. So you have to have a wife that is open to that. And uh, people ask you, well, what attracted you to Nora Jean uh, 49 years ago? Because we dated for two years. When I met her, what attracted me the most, she was, she was out of college working two jobs, two jobs, right? Because she wanted more and she knew in order to have more, she needed to do more. So she found a second part-time job. Now I said, now there's a sister that has the kind of work ethic that is necessary to have the things that we want for our family and for our children. I think I could work with that because I was working two jobs too. So that was one of the things, one of the big things, aside from the fact that she was fine uh, and, and, and sweet and just, you know, everything that I wanted in a wife. Now, I waited fairly late to get married because I don't, I, 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 you know, listen, the average man doesn't mature until 40 years old. I think one of the biggest decisions, bad decisions that we make is that we, we make that choice, that the most important choice in our life too early. I mean, we don't even know ourselves yet. We haven't, men haven't sown their wild oats. Sisters are still, you know, really trying to gather their maturity and be the incredible woman that God wants them to be. So I think the later that you marry, the, the more, the better that decision will be. That's why so many second marriages work out so well, because you know yourself a lot better than you did when you're making a, a, an important decision like that when you're 25, 26, or, or you're under 30 years old. Take let, your time. Let, let me ask you, Dr. Frazier, how old were you when you got married? I was, now remember, I was born <clears throat> in 1945. So my parents got married in their teens. That was of that wow. generation, both from the South, <laughs> right? They were married in, the, in their teens. I was very close to 30 years old when I married. So I was an an old man back then. (laughs) Right. Because in in my, in the baby boomer generation, you fundamentally got married when you technically graduated from college, four or five years out of high school. Okay. The pressure was on. Right. So I was not ready. I knew that I was not ready. Right. I knew that I could not make a good decision. And if I made that decision, I would I would not honor that decision because the vow says till death do us part. That's what the vows say. So are you serious? Is that what you really want to do? Are you you are you are, are you ready, willing and able to stay with the, your partner until death do you part? Or are you just sampling or are you just trying stuff? Well, that's very expensive. And as we had this conversation earlier, right, mess a marriage up two or three times and see what that looks like. Because when you get married, you combine your assets. Let's say you stay together for four or five or six years. Something happens. You divorce. You divide the assets. You get half. She gets half. Then you marry again. And things are going fine. Three or four, five, six years into it, something happens. And you divorce again. The half that you had now has to be divided in half again. Do that three or four times and see what your life looks like. Right. So it's so it, you got to really take it's an economic decision. It's mostly uh, a, a, a sort of a spiritual and, uh, and an emotional decision, but it's a very serious economic decision as well. And you're going to take all those things into account. You need to smar- marry a smart person whether male or female, but certainly in the economic realm. So you got to do the, you know, you got to, you got to ask the tough questions. You got to be, pay attention. And, um, and, and, and part, a huge part of your decision will be based on the economic, economic viability long term in terms of sustaining the relationships and building a family Right, building a family and providing your children with the tools that they need. Mm. Uh, everybody who's watching, I'm speaking with George C. Frazier, author of the book Success Runs in Our Race. He's also the founder of the Power Networking Conference, which I highly recommend. It's excellent. 
uh, I will be there. I'm going to be there every year uh, because I, I think it's um, it's literally if you're talking about secrets to connecting with uh, other folks that think like you that can help you get ahead. This is the best place to be. There's there's no there's no place better than this one. So uh, the URL is on the screen. Powernetworkingconference.com. Uh, do me a favor, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. Take one moment. If you know somebody who can benefit from hearing from someone like Dr. Frazier, please share. You guys are our distribution network. We we're not NBC, ABC, or CBS. Uh, you are the distribution network, and uh, you all know the power of these ideas. Uh, you know that this man is a winner. Uh, he can teach you how to be a winner. And he teaches us all the things that we need to know as black folks. You know, um, I tell you what, if uh, if I could get every every black man to, to think like Dr. Frazier, again, we would never lose. We would never lose. So I want you all to kind of process that for a minute and give me a yes if you agree with what I'm saying. Please understand, like, take a moment. Let me know that I'm connecting with you on this statement because I really want us to stop and to be very conscious of how we got here and, and why some of us ain't getting nowhere. <laughs> it's because mm-hmm. we're listening to the wrong people, the wrong leadership. So Dr. Frazier, I want to, uh, I want to dig deeper and ask you, um, uh, you know, when you're talking about, you know, just sort of the things that you, uh, that you understood when you were young, I, I, I like what you were talking about in terms of the realities of relationships and consistency of those relationships. I found that in my life, when it came, when I got to the point where I was really taking off and, and, and doing well, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've always been a hard worker and I've had times where I could feel success might be coming around the corner. But as you know, when you're young, you're figuring it out. You're confused. You're frustrated. <laughs> you know, you, you feel like the world will never find out that you're any good at anything. And then things start to click, you know, and then they start clicking more and more and you start getting into your groove. And uh, and, and and that at least that was in my, that was my journey. And what I found in that process was two things. W- one thing that you mentioned, I thought was 100 percent true was uh, with that marriage piece. You know, I, I, I started really thinking deeply about how relationships affect your your wealth. And so even what you said about, you know, one divorce cutting your wealth in half, another divorce cutting your that half in half, another divorce cutting that half in half. You know, then you're down to a 16th or an eighth of what you had. I I, I, I I thought about that. Right. And I thought that the response a lot of people would have is to say, well, that's why I'll never get married. Right. And which, which is fine. That I, I don't have an issue with people's cho- choices. But here's the thing I noticed, too. Uh, if let's say you don't get married. Well, if you're still not responsible with who you keep uh, company with in terms of women or men, then we think about it. You look at a guy. He's got one baby's mama. That's going to be one piece of his paycheck. Another baby's mama. That's another piece of your paycheck. Another baby mama, that's another piece of your paycheck. So either way, when you're not sort of looking for something that's the things that are sturdy and consistent in your life, it makes it hard to build because you're being diluted. You know, you're being chopped into little pieces economically to the point where you become this tiny little crumb and it's difficult for you to move forward. Uh, And so I'd like to get your thoughts on some of that, because um, because I have found that sturdy people not just, uh, you know, in terms of the, the woman that I chose, but but just friendships and people you can really build with was little, literally the number one thing that made all the difference uh, in, in everything I was able to do. I can look at that guy and say, OK, he's going to get the job done. She's going to handle her business, you know, and, and then you start finding that you have to kind of filter some folks out because some folks are not everybody built that way. What are your thoughts on what I just said? I love it. I love it. Um uh, it is, it's the answer, Dr. Watkins. It's, you say it eloquently and quietly, but it really is the answer that you're going to have to work on three kinds of networks throughout your entire life. There are eight passages in life. Um, each passage is about 10 years. Let me say that differently. If you're a different person at 10 than you were at 1. You're a different person at 20 than you were at 10. You're a different person at 30 than 20, 40 than 30, 50 than 40, 60 than 50. You're constantly changing and you're constantly evolving. So you're going to have to work on three kinds of networks. These are the people that are around you. First is your personal network. These are the people that cheer you on, lift you up, hug you. These are the people that that, that have your back. Let's call that your network at home. If things are not right at home, they're not going to be right anyplace else. 
So you got to get home right first. And when I say home, I mean family, extended family, mom and them, cousins, extended family, etc. Work on that network and work on it throughout every phase of your life, every passage of your life, because that's constantly changing too. The second is the, the key, and that's your operational network. These are the people that help you to get specific tasks done in life. Whether it is the place that you work, whether it's your, the development of your own business, um, whether it's you are serving as a deacon or a deaconess at a church, um, this is your operational network. These people platoon in and out of your life. Not everybody stays in your life throughout your entire life. It's the old saying, people come into your life for a season, a reason, or a lifetime, right? There are only two people that was in my life from zero to I'm 76 years old now. One is my my sister, um, uh, Emma Fraser Pendleton. So your operational network, you're helping people get things done. They're helping you get things done and they're platooning in and out of your life. The final network, this is the critical one, is what I call your strategic network. <clears throat> These are the people that are smarter than you. These are the people that are where you want to be. These are the people that will drag you into the 21st century kicking and scrying, crying. These are the people that ultimately could be your mentors and your coaches, right? So it is the combination. It is the universe of those three networks that you properly manage, you properly cultivate, you properly weed out. Dr. Watkins said that, yes, you're going to have to remove toxic people and blood suckers from your life. There's no question about it. And, and they will be attracted to you. Now, this is very easy to say, very difficult to do, because most of these people are your family. Your family, right? So there are people in your family <laughs> that you're going to have to come to grips with, and you're simply going to have to bless them and release them. Let me give you a very quick, simple story, personal story. <clears throat> Had I not blessed and released my family, we would not be having this conversation. Why? I was in orphanages and foster care for 15 years. When I aged out of foster care, I'm the youngest of 11, eight boys and three girls. When I aged out of foster care, my father, who remained in touch with us, my mother was in a mental institution. That's why we ended up in orphanages and foster care in the first place. But my father kept in touch with us, maintained a beautiful brownstone in bed in Brooklyn, New York. I aged out and I went back to that brownstone. But I had three older brothers, right, who went there, who got there before me. By the time I got there, they were heroin addicts and heroin dealers. One ended up spending 15 years on Rikers Island, and one ended up being killed in a drug deal that went bad, okay? So I'm in this environment with heroin and uh, dealers and heroin addicts, and these are my blood brothers. So I said to myself, but it was really God talking to me, I got to get the hell out of here. So I got my stuff together. I waited a couple of years, packed up what little stuff I had, got on a Greyhound bus and came to Cleveland, Ohio to get away from my family. And I didn't tell them where I went to because I didn't want to be connected to them in any way. I didn't want to be influenced by them in any way. I connected back with them five years later. I drove to New York. My brother, Edward, who was a stone cold heroin addict by that time i went to his apartment dragged him out of his apartment he was high put him in my car and drove him to cleveland ohio and changed his life so you have to remove toxic people and blood suckers from your life most of them are going to come within uh, within your family that's why it's so difficult to do if you don't do that you're not going to get where you're going you're not mm. going to get where you're going. If you don't cultivate and develop those three kinds of networks, personal, operational, and strategic network, you don't ever want to be the smartest person in your network. If you're the smartest person in your network, you're in the wrong damn network. So it is a myriad of relationships and friends that God puts in your life as a test. It is one of the obstacles that you will have to overcome. My favorite quote is by Marcus Aurelius. Marcus, uh, outside of the Bible, my favorite quote inside of the Bible is Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. But Marcus Aurelius said that the impediment to action advances the action. 
What stands in your way becomes the way. Let me say that differently. The obstacle is the way. Where there is no obstacle, there is no way. What is the, I mean, this is deep now. What is the first thing God does when he gives you an assignment, metaphorically, when he gives you an assignment that he feels that you are prepared for? What's the first thing he does once you get the assignment? He puts an obstacle in your way. Your job is to find a way over, around, through, and under the obstacle to make the mistakes, to stumble, to fail, because you learn far more from failure than you do from success, right? And when you are able to do that, when you find a way over, around, through, and under the obstacle that God has put in your way, you then get an attaboy and an girl, and you get a new assignment at a slightly higher level. And what's the next thing God does? He puts an obstacle in your way. And your job is to find a way over, around, through, and under there. This is how we learn. This is how we grow. People are put into our lives so that we can navigate and negotiate either a partnership, a strategic alliance, a, a joint venture, or we bless them and release them. Right? It's something people, God puts negativity in your life so that you can learn how to deal with this. These are the obstacles of life. It's okay. Don't panic. Right. Just navigate, learn the lessons and move on. Mm. Wow. Wow. This. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm pausing because <clears throat> I, I don't know about you all, but I wanted to take that in uh, because I think that this is um, this is what we need to hear. Um, I hope that in the chat you will uh, thank this man uh, for what he's doing, uh, because this is what we need. We need reeducation in every level. And uh, and that story about about your brothers and the heroin and everything, that's um, that's sad because those stories are so common. You know, my father came back from Vietnam with a heroin issue and um, and he had friends in the same boat. And I was lucky because he made a choice to go in a certain direction. Right. Um, and that wasn't my biological father. My biological father you know, also had a drug issue and he made a different choice. Right. And so, you know, when you talk about just some of these things, I mean, that's all too real in so many of our families. Absolutely. And, uh, and it just it just breaks your heart, you know, <laughs> because these right. are the people, you know, you, you're taught to lift up the people behind you. And sometimes you can't. All right. Um, imagine, Dr. Boyce, had I not been able to navigate that obstacle put in my way. Mm. Three heroin addicts. One sir, ultimately serving time in Rikers Island, the other killed in a drug deal that went bad. Had I not had the consciousness, the God consciousness, listening and saying, I have to bless and release this. I have to get out of here. If I do not, I will end up like them. That was my, my subconscious thought. And then I had to execute and act on it. I couldn't just think about it. I had to execute and act on it. Now, I don't know who we are talking to, but I promise you that there's somebody in your life right now, they're closer to you than you think, right? That unless you navigate and negotiate a way not to be around them, you are not going to make it. Had I not navigated that, Dr. Boyce, we would not be having this conversation. That one obstacle, that one obstacle put in my way at that moment, I had to figure out a way over, around, through, or under it by any means necessary. Mm. Everybody that's watching, um, in case you didn't know who I'm speaking with, I'm speaking with George <clears throat> B. Frazier. He's the author of the book, Success Runs in Our Race, and the founder of the Power Networking Conference. If you'd like to learn more about the conference, I highly recommend it. You can go to powernetworkingconference.com. <clears throat> the URL is right there on the screen. Also, please uh, hit the thumbs up button, share, subscribe button, and uh, and share this. Share this video with anybody in your family that needs to hear this because um, he, he's talking about some real stuff here. Uh, Dr. Frazier, I'm looking in the chat, and everybody's reacting because we all have a story. Give me a yes in the chat. If you have, if you feel like you have a testimony when it comes to working around, <laughs> if you know, hey, Dr. Boyce, if, if they don't have a testimony, we need to yank their black card because I don't know. <laughs> if, if testimony doesn't have a story, right? That's our life. That is our story. But we have to navigate and negotiate there. We have to figure out how to extract ourselves from that and learn the lessons. Now, if we don't learn the lessons. 
what happens? This is biblical. You repeat it until you learn it. Mm. Mm. And you keep repeating it. And we've all said, we all know people in our lives, and we, you know, they come to us with a sob story, and we say to ourselves, Boy, oh, that Negro never learns. You ain't learned yet. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. They just never learn. I don't care what you put in their way. They don't, they they may they may mammy do a mammy made way of getting around it, but they don't learn shit, right? And and <laughs> they just keep repeating it until they yeah. learn it. Oh, I, I I know that all too well, and so and sometimes I I I've been that Negro myself, you know. Yeah, like, you know and, and, and right. I'm telling you, you got a hard head with it. You don't learn your lessons. Um, you're gonna be stuck in purgatory. Uh, so so you know, Doctor Frazier, you said something I want to uh, touch on uh, before I let you let you go. This has been a great conversation, it, as it always is. That's why I love I love the fact that you come by. It's, it's an honor always to talk to you. You mentioned a quote in the Bible about a good man always uh, always leaving an inheritance. Yeah, Proverbs thirteen twenty two. Proverbs thirteen twenty two. Okay, 22. I'm gonna look that. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Hmm. Let me say that a different way. To be black and beautiful, Doctor Watkin, means nothing in this world unless you're black and powerful. Okay, mm -hmm. we cannot be black and proud and niggas too, right? Mm -hmm. White folks are planning for three generations and we're planning for Saturday night, okay? Mm -hmm. right? and the goal for us ultimately is to win. That's what the whole video was about, not to look like we're winning, right? I would rather carry a plastic bag with $5,000 in it than to carry a $5,000 Louis Vuitton bag with $100 in it. Your ass ain't winning. Louis Vuitton is winning. Nike is winning. Gucci is winning. You ain't winning. You see, the rich stay rich by pretending to be poor, and the poor stay poor by pretending to be rich. So unless we fix this, Right. This is what you talk about. This is your whole thing. Right. And you are a financial wizard. I mean, I just love the way you deal with the whole money issue. You and Dr. Claude Anderson together. Boy, that's that's a, du a double fist pump. I mean, it's just awesome. So keep saying it. My thing is networking, but you can't talk about networking and relationship building and, and, and building a web and connecting the dots without talking about money. Right. Let me say that 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 differently. When we finish pontificating ad nauseum about our issues, somebody's got to write a freaking check. A check has to be written. Money has to exchange hands. So you can't talk about all this stuff and not include financial education, financial literacy and helping us to understand how to better manage our money before we get reparations. OK, uh, so I'm, I'm 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 hoping we don't get reparations if we get it for another five or 10 years so that we will have enough time to educate our people on what to do with that money. Because if we don't do that, guess where that those trillions of dollars are going to end up right back in white folks hands. That's where it's going to end up. Right. Because we are the most financially illiterate people in America. We're at the bottom of every single freaking economic statistic that matters in this country. So we need your leadership. We need your guidance. We need your knowledge. And by the way, Dr. Boyce, we need you to keep saying what you're saying for the rest of your freaking life. Right. Yes, for the rest of your life. Never get tired of repeating what you're saying because the key to learning is simplicity and repetition. You got to say it 50 different ways on 50 different days. If you go back to YouTube and look at my speeches from 20 years ago, read my books from 30 years ago, I've been saying the same damn things for 30, 40 years. That's mm. the anointment God has given me. That's the anointment God has given you. Um, so I love you for that. And this is why I would uh, anytime I'm invited, I'm, I'm here because we are of like mind. No question about that. So and, and, and you're 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 co you got one rail covered. I have another rail covered. Right. So we're going to move this thing down the track. We've got both rails covered and eventually those rails are going to meet. No question about it. That it's not possible for you to be doing and saying what you're saying, and me to be doing and and saying what I'm saying, and for us ultimately not to, uh, not to meet. Now, the other thing is, you're a leader. You get trains moving. 
you get trains moving. Black people don't, in general, don't get trains moving. Mm -hmm. We get on moving trains. That's what mm -hmm. we get on, right? If the train is righteous and good, we will get on that train. That's why you have so many darn followers. That's a wonderful thing. You are a moving train. What I'm doing is a moving train. That's why I have hundreds of thousands following me. They're on that train. I moved the train. I created the inertia. You created the inertia. There are others out there. We're not the only ones. But I'll close. I'll close with two things. If you'll give, if you'll be so kind to give me the time. Sure. One thing will take three minutes, and the other, the, the final thing will take three minutes. I may have talked to you about. After 40 years of serving black people, six best-selling books, 10 million frequent flyer models, over 3,000 speeches that I've given in every place that black people have been dispersed, I've come up with what I call my 85-10-4-1 rule. My 85-10-4-1 rule about our people. This is my observation of, again, 40 years of service to our people. What does that mean? 85-10-4-1 rule. 85% of our people are sleepwalking through life. 10% are pimping the sleepwalkers. 4% have pulled themselves out of that dark sunken place and they are ready to see the light. 1% are the light and they're ready to help the 4% get woke. So let's see, let's do the math on that. 46 million black people, 4% are ready for what we're talking about. 1.8, 1.9 million. 1% 1 are the light. 1% of 446 million is almost 500,000. So there are 2.2 .2 to 2.3 million black people in this country that are ready for what we're talking about. That's who you're focused on. Those people follow you and those people follow me. Now, don't think that's a small number. That's a huge freaking number. You got 2.2, 2, 2.4 million black people thinking and doing and acting and executing on the things that we're teaching them. We can change our world. That's who I'm focused on. I'm not focused on everybody. I'm focused on those who are of, of, of in the right in their right mind and have their right consciousness. Now they present themselves. You don't really have to dig for them. If you're saying the right things, if you're doing the right things, you're acting in the right way, you're modeling the behavior that you expect from your followers and your people, they will follow you. That's why I love you. You are a messenger and a leader, and a train mover, right? And keep pushing that train. Keep saying what you're saying. Keep doing what you're doing to your grave. That's what God wants you to do. That is your anointment. That's why you do it so well. That's why you're totally engaged in it. That's why you're constantly reading and learning it and bringing that information back to our people. You're the assigned reader. As you know, they, as the old saying goes, if you, want to put, if you want to hide something from a black man, put it in a book. Well, we need black people who will read for us, then interpret what's in there, and then uh, lay out the path. You are one of those people. Dr. Claude Anderson was for, has been for years, right? I'm one of those people. What's behind me is my library in my office. There's 1,500 books in my library, 15,000 books at home, right? Mm -hmm. The average American only reads one book a year. If we, if we read one book a month in five years, we will have read five, uh, 60 books, and the average American will have only read five. So mm -hmm. stay on the course. Keep following Dr. The voice. Now, let me make you an offer. I hope that you can't refuse. This offer is not only for the virtual conference coming up August the 11th through the 14th, four full days. Dr. Dr. Watkins is part of our faculty, so you'll see him. He's, he conducts an incredible, what we call a power panel. Um, and uh, we have Ambassador Andrew Young. I mean, I don't even want to go through the list. There's 50 faculty members. Go on powernetworkingconference.com, www.powernetworkingconference. Every, every leader, every brother or sister that is about something, right, uh, has spoken at the Power Networking Conference over the last 20 years. And you'll see many of them who will be back with us this year. So look and see who the faculty is. So 
So this offer is for the virtual, which is $297. And for the live conference that we will be doing in Houston, August the 3rd through the 6th, nothing beats live. This is good. This is the best that we can do. The virtual is off the chain, but nothing replaces being with each other. So it's for the live next year, August the 3rd through the 6th, and the virtual. So it's a package. If you go on Power Networking Conference, you'll see that to get the live tickets, which are basically almost sold out a year in advance because Black people can't wait to get back together, you'll see that one adult registration to the live conference next year is $1,500. And a student registration, and we encourage you to bring students, is $800. That's $2,300 for the live for you and a young person 17 to 25. The virtual is $300 this year. That's a $2,600 package. That's what that package is. I'm going to take $2,000 off that package, give you both the live and the virtual for you and a young person for $599, $599. You cannot go to this website and get that offer. You have to get that offer through me. You have to email me. Only I can authorize that offer. Okay? There you go. There you go. Only I can authorize that offer. Now, you can go to the faculty part uh, where it says, I can't see it. Uh, oh, thank you. presenters, presenters. Yeah, that's the uh, homepage. That's the homepage. But if you go to the uh, VIP, there we go. And you scroll up and down, those are your faces in there. Everybody is in there that's at the conference. You'll see. So you'll see you Yala Van Zandt, Philip Bailey, Janice Bryan Howroyd, Michael Bazden, Freddie Haynes, Jamal Bryant, um, uh, Dr. Nate Irvin. It just goes on and on. Right? There's a guy over there with the ball head and glasses to the right. <laughs> no again. <laughs> Bill Harper, right? Uh, AJ Jamal, Lance London. I mean, it just goes on and on. The, and then we have incredible sponsors and we have keynote speakers, uh, Dr. Anthony Browder, uh, you know him. So it just goes on and on. So it's $5.99. You must email me at gfraser at frasernet.com. That's gfraser at frasernet.com. That's gfraser, F-R-A-S-E-R at FraserNet.com, email me. In the subject line, put I'm in. In the body of the email, put your full name and your cell number. Your full name and your cell number. Your full name and your cell number. I will personally call you, and we will handle our business over the phone by credit card. Okay, so that's the offer, $2,000 off the $2,600 package, which will get you and a student into the virtual and into the live next year in Houston, August the 3rd through the 6th. Wow. That's the story and I'm sticking to it. Well, I love it. I love it. I love it. And, um, and I'll tell you, um, you know, like, like I was telling everybody, this is uh, an extraordinary conference. And uh, as you can see, Dr. Frazier is an extraordinary man. Um, I also encourage you all to check out his books. Um, you know, he's, he's uh, not just a great speaker, but a great writer. And uh, and he he walks it and talks it and he's very successful as a result of that. And uh, I would love for those of you that are looking for different ideas. I know a lot of you all hear from me. You hear from me every day. Uh, but also, um, I wouldn't have invited this brother on here if I didn't believe in him. I told you all he's on my Mount Rushmore. I told you I got I believe in showing respect to those who cleared the way for for people like myself. And uh, and I mentioned the four uh, Dr. Frazier, Dr. Claude Anderson. Kenny Gamble, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and the the thread that these men have in common. And to tell you all the truth, I don't even know. I don't even these these guys have all known each other for years. I have no idea, you know, who's friends and who's not. <laughs> I, I, I don't. But I'm but friends I, with I, all of them. I'm friends with all of them. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that and that doesn't surprise me because you're so good with relationships. You know, you you um you seek common ground. Uh, I've I've watched you. I've seen you in situations where. You had an opportunity to disagree with a person, maybe even an opportunity to disagree with me, but you sought the common ground. And that's something that um, I actually learned, you know, from from observing you. And, uh, and people don't know this, but I actually have a leadership coach that talks to me about 
things like that. You know, hey boys, don't always come out with your fist up. You know, right? <laughs> come out with your hand out. You know, and just shake a hand. You know, give a hug. And um, and 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 I'll tell you the the, the thing that the four of you have in common is that all of us, and I hope everybody's listening, you agree with me, that we really have to honor our strong Black men, our strong Black men that are builders. Uh, all those four men that I mentioned, the, the the thing they have in common is that they were able to build uh, despite the so-called oppression that's designed to keep the Black man in the cage. Um, and they're, 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 they're all kings in their own right. Um, they all have their, in, their empires. And, and also, all of these individuals relate well with others. Right. So so that unity is really important for success. So I hope you all will take that lesson as well. I didn't mean to talk so much about it, but uh, I'm inspired by this. And, and I hope you didn't mind me sharing that. So I just want to say thank you very much, Dr. Frazier. As always, brother, it is it was so great to have you here. I appreciate it, man. And so my, my final thought uh, is I want to answer a very, very important question that I get asked all the time. Dr. Fraser, what is the meaning of life? Hmm. <clears throat> there is no meaning to life. You have meaning and you bring it to life. So it is crazy to ask the question <clears throat> when, in fact, you are the answer. You hmm. are the meaning of life. Mm. Wow, there you go. <laughs> y'all, did y'all did y'all catch that? You just got the meaning of life. <laughs> and it made it made damn sense. That, that's what's great. I mean, it, it, it fits so well. It, it says that that to me, what my interpretation of that statement was that you have the power to manifest. And 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 as and part of that power means that I can decide, look you know, that life, my life has a meaning because I subscribe meaning to it. I, I choose what that meaning is going to be. And, uh, and, and that almost gives, that's a godlike power that's given to us by a higher power, right? Like, like the power of God is in you. And I, I love, I, I think it's great. I'm going to carry that. That's right. that's right. That you give life meaning. Not yes. life gives you meaning. You Man. give it meaning. Wow. Okay. See, see, see. So, everybody in here, first of all, uh, do me a favor. Take one moment and give a thank you to this brother for all the wisdom that he dropped. Uh, you might have to watch this video twice because I want you to meditate on everything that he said. After you do that and, and hit the thumbs up button and all that stuff, so please support the channel. Uh, I want you to also go take a nap <laughs> so that these ideas can sink into your subconscious mind. Go, go chill out. You know, uh, you know, just relax. You know, with your woman, or or if, if you smoke smoke joints, like you know, just go smoke a joint. I don't smoke, but, but it's okay if you do. Whatever it takes for you to relax, go do that now. And I want you to really process what he said because one thing I can tell everybody here is that I believe success is a um, it really is a spiritual process. It involves um, all your emotionality. It involves uh, your subconscious mind. And that's what's going to make you special, make you great in this world. So, so take it in. Don't just move on. Like really process this. And uh, and again, thank you so much, Dr. Frazier. It was awesome. And uh, thank you all for hanging out with us. It was great. And uh, the URL is on the screen. It's powernetworkingconference.com. I will see you all there. And uh, and, and at the physical event, uh, I will give everybody in here a hug when you see me at the at the convention because I'm going to be there in the front row. So God bless everybody. Please have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Take care. Appreciate it. Love you, my brother. Take care. Same to you.